Good afternoon, this is Everett, Ever, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now today I'm going to do a watercolor demonstration painting. Uh, and it's called uh, Sailing Ship. And I did the drawing ahead of time for today. This, I used a grid system for transferring. And what that is, uh, this is the photograph I used as a reference. And I put a grid over top of a three-quarter inch grid. And then I drew a grid on the drawing paper and transferred the points on the drawing, on the uh, picture over to the, over to the uh, watercolor paper. So I drew the grid here and then I transferred those points over here. Now today what I've done is I've erased all those lines. Uh, so that they don't show up in my painting. And I'm going to paint, paint this uh, scene today, which is a sailboat with four men. One, two, three, four. Four, uh, excuse me, four sails. And the uh, water and some sky. Uh, what I've gone, after I finished uh, cleaning up the lines, then I went ahead, I put some masking fluid down. And I used uh, the fine line mask, mask pen, which has masking fluid in it. And I put that up here uh, on this little flag and I also put down in the water to save the whites that I have. I'm going to take you back to the photograph. Uh, I'm going to change the colors quite a bit. I'm not going to have the, the clouds up there and uh, I'm, not, I'm going to change the colors. The water of course will have a little bit of same, similar colors but uh, I, I modified the, uh, the painting a little bit. Over here in my palette I have lemon yellow, yellow lemon, and I have pyro red, and cobalt blue. Now I have these diluted way down with a lot of water. And I'll test it here on my, my test sheet. For, to paint the sails, I'm going to use a multicolor sail color, and I'm going to use the yellow, red, and blue on the sails. So my first step, with clean water and a separate brush, I'm going to wet the sails with water. I'll start up here in the top right. So I'm, I'm, painting, I'm putting water, I'm painting with uh, water on these sails to get the paper wet. And then I'm going to put the, the colors on top of that. Now, so I'm going to start up here at the top with blue. Then I'm going to trans transfer to the red. Check my color again. That's nice. Okay. And I'll leave some white paper. So I'm really I'm really painting the colors of uh, white because white is not a pure color. It has reflections from the sky, it has reflections from the surrounding area. So we're uh, we're using, the, we're using the property of reflection here to give us a different color of white than what you would normally see. Okay, now that's going to dry. That's going to dry nice and light, which is what I want. Just a tint, just a tint of color. Now, so that's got to dry. I want that to be dry before I do anything else. So while that's drying, I can work down here 
uh, at the bottom uh, on the boat itself. So let me start with uh, a round brush. And I'm going to, let's see, I think I'll use, uh, I haven't used this color in a painting for a while. This is a uh, alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson. It's a beautiful red. And I'm going to use that in the boat, in the boat color. I think that'll, that'll show up very nicely. So I'm using a round brush because it's not a very large area. And I've got this part masked off because the water with the waves is right there next to it. So I don't have to worry about painting the, the water. I'm just going to paint the ship at a, a bit of the space of the boat. And over here on this side, on the other side of the wave. Okay, I'll let that dry. Now when that dries, it's going to dry lighter, so I may have to go back and add some more color in there. And let's see, on top of that, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. I'm going to paint the, uh, the railing on this boat. This boat here, I'm going to put, I'm going to put burnt sienna here on this section. So while that sail is drying, I'm, pl I'm working on the, the smaller sections of the boater while the, while, the sail, while the sails dry. And later on, you'll, I'll do some touch-up, and uh, I'll actually be using uh, colored pencils, because some of these smaller areas, I'm just, get, I'm just getting, I'm blocking in the colors right now, but then I can go back uh, with a brush, but I, I'm going to try. I'm going to do the. Uh, I'm going to do the cleanup with the, with color pencils today. For just minor areas, just just little places to touch it up. Let's see. I'll go dark here. Now here on the mast. Now here on the the bow. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I want to get, I want to get working on the sky. I'm going to mute the sound, and I'm going to put the hair dryer. I'm back. That was just to get that extra little moisture off the sail, because I don't want to uh, have the water run on me. All right. Now what I'm going to do now is going to clean up my palette, because I'm going to mix the sky colors. Okay, so what I'm going to do, the first color I'm going to put in for sky, I'm going to put in uh, ultramarine blue. That'll be the, the top color. And then as I move down, I'm going to trans transfer into uh, cobalt blue. I'm going to transition the cobalt which is a lighter color, like a medium, medium blue. And then I'm going to put one more color, I'm going to put cerulean blue, which is the lightest color. So let me adjust those, let me adjust those colors a little bit more, I'll put a little more, a little more cobalt here. So when I lay out the colors on my palette, I'm also planning the, the value and the colors that I'm going to put on the painting. So I lay all the colors out that I'm going to use. 
So I have a dark, medium, and light value blue, which is what I'm going to put in the sky. Okay, now with just one brush. Okay, now I'm going to use one large uh, three-quarter inch uh, natural hairbrush. I'm going to start at the top. Nice big bold strokes. And this is a big area, so it's going to take a lot of paint to cover this area, but that's why I made a big puddle. And I'll go over, over the top of this masking, and then I'll come down. My design is marked in, I'll follow the lines. Let me see, turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. So I'll follow my sketch. And while it's still wet, uh, move the paint around so I have all the coverage. Okay, now I'm going to move into the uh, cobalt blue. And I'll paint around this sail. And bring it around this side. Continue with this cobalt blue over here. So this color is really going to make this sail stand out with the, the, the blue color against the blue sky against the, the white sail. Okay, now my last color, which is down by the horizon, is going to be uh, cerulean blue, and that's my lightest blue color. Come down. Again, follow my sketch. Down to the horizon line. And move on the other side. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can. While the paint's still wet, it, it, they merge together very nicely. I don't want to leave any, any ugly lines. Okay. Now I'm going to take the, the round brush and go in between a little bit here. So the cerulean I'm going to put in, uh, in behind the boat here, underneath the sail. Down by the horizon. Horizon's uh, the water, really the water line. It's uh, splashing out there. So Following my sketch, Now there's a little, little patch up here in a up here on this near this mask which comes down here. I'll fill that in with a round brush. This is the sky that shows between the sails. There's a little patch of sky coming through there. Just a little bit up here on this side, just a touch. 
just give a more de a little more detail on that point. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I guess uh, well let, let the sky dry up here. I don't I don't want to put anything around that wet paint right now. So I'll go down and play with the water. That way I'll I'll cover in almost all the whites. I've got the white sails in the, the sky. Now I'll work on the bottom here on the water. So I'm going to use the same colors basically using the sky. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue. A uh, little bit of cobalt, and then in, in the foreground, though, I'm going to use a little bit of a little bit of uh, special blue, peacock blue. Okay, it's got a little green to it. I'm going to put a little, mix a little green in with that. Okay, so uh, starting back here on the horizon line. I've got the I've got the white. Uh, it's got to be darker than that. Let's see. Uh, the water will be darker in the along the horizon line. Right, pick up the bigger brush. side, the horizon line, is a, it's really not a straight line because it's really a waves out there that's moving in the, in the water. So it's got a rocky, a rocky horizon line. And I'll make that darker too. So I want that horizon line to really pop out. So I put extra paint in the brush to make that horizon line really show. And as I come forward, the, the blue gets a little bit lighter. And around this, the bow here, I'm going to be very careful. Okay. I'm going to go back to my big brush. I'll pick up a little bit of cobalt now, a little lighter blue, and finish off the water. Now this peacock blue, which has got a little bit of green in it, gives a wonderful ocean color, because the ocean has a uh, blue and also has a, a tint of green in it. A tint of green. So I'm going to take advantage of that with this uh, this color that I have on my palette which is peacock blue. And I don't want to overdo that so I'll go back and pick up some more of cobalt. And so I'm mixing in the cobalt now with that peacock blue. When you're painting, you don't want to overdo one color. You want to kind of have a, a nice little mixture. Uh, this way, this gives you a nice variety of of colors, even in the water. Now, of course, when I when I mat this off later on, you know a lot of this will not show. Just putting all the colors on there, just just to finish up the, the paper. Okay, uh, sky looks a little bit rough up there, but we can that can be smoothed out. Okay, let's go back now. I'm going to put in the uh, some of the masks, some of the masks, M A S T S masks. I said mask. Uh, so I'm going to get a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, nice brown color, and get a little bit of yellow ochre. So those, between those two colors there, I can start with a lighter color and roll the brush, get a nice sharp point. And I can start up here in this mass here. I can go up here and put the the top of it will be a little bit lighter with the sun 
the light shining on that mast and maybe this one over here also and then as it comes down in the shadows here it'll get a little darker so I'll put the burnt sienna at this point and I'll bring it down to about right there okay and the same way this one this one over here the same way in the shadows I'll bring this down to here a little wider. Okay. Now these these cross beams here that hold the sail, this one here will start out dark and as it comes out into the light um, it's a little bit lighter. And this one will same thing, a little bit darker here to be in the shadow area. And then a little bit lighter as it come out into the light. Okay, now there's the darker one down here underneath. This is the beams that hold up the sail down at the bottom. This will be in shadow. And this will be lighter over here. And this will be lighter over here. And then this large, the big beam underneath there for the big sail will be most almost in shadow all the way. A little bit of a little bit of light spot over here. Okay, we okay, were roughing that in. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and put in the the bottom of these masts. Masts mast come down into the into the ship. So these these are parts of the structure, and the little these are little lights in dark areas. Then there's uh, lots of color. There's lots of color on, uh, on the. There's tarps and different things that are painted different colors. So I'll pick up that uh, peacock blue, and I think I'll put some peacock blue in here. This is where I can use some of the brighter colors on this boat. This is where my uh, center of interest is. Is and the structure of the boat and then I can pick up some yeah I'm talking to myself here as I go along I'm, I'm putting in bright colors around the area I guess the focal point here uh, here's a green number one putting into the uh, focal point area and I'll even put in some uh, yellow lemon in here. Again, just to give a variety of color, but also to give a little bit of interest and so forth. Uh, hey, there's a side, a shadow side to this structure here. Be a little bit of burnt sienna. And uh, I could even put a little bit of, a little bit of uh, Opera, a little bit of pink. Okay. Okay, I get I got two figures on here, which I'm going to put in. So I'm going to put them. Uh, there's one on this area here, and there's one there. Two little figures. So I'm going to I'm going to put them uh, in life jackets. So I'll use the orange, and I'll put this one right here. I'm going to put the orange color as a life jacket right here. And the other figure is over here. I'll put the life jacket color on here. A little bit of orange. Okay. Then I'll take a dark, the darkest color in my palette, which is royal blue. 
and I'll put a little dot there which will, which will show basically that's where the head is. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shadows in the sail. That's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use basically one color here. So I'm going to take out the brown. Let's take out this uh, peacock blue a little bit here and take this brown off of here. Okay. So I'm going to mix up uh, cobalt blue. and a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe add a little bit of cornucodon violet just a little bit I'm trying to make a nice medium gray color and I'll take my test sheet here that's pretty, that's pretty heavy I'll water it down just a little bit more okay that's that's the value I want over here this lighter value, okay? Which is the same mixture but with a little bit more water in it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is take the uh, half inch flat brush, rinse out the round brush, rinsing out the round brush, get the water out of it, because I'm going to use that as my blending brush. The round brush with just water in it will blend the edges of the, of the paint. Now this one I'm going to make sure it's clean. I take that brush, it had yellow on it before, so I take it, wash it out real good, and then I put it against a paper towel or a tissue and make sure that the color is clean. There it is, it's clean. Okay, so I'm going to load my brush with that, uh, that light or medium gray. Now load the brush from both sides. Okay, and the first the first shadow is going to be on this front sail here, the jib out here. So I'm going to put that shadow in there, and uh, the light's going to hit probably going to shadow about one third of it, or maybe this third of the sail. Okay, come back here. Now remember that the color is going to dry lighter, so even though it may look a little dark now. You have to plan ahead and say, okay, I know that's dark now, but it'll lighten up as soon as it dries. So this one comes around this way. This has a little curve to it. So I, wanted, I wanted to emphasize that little curve. Okay, and this, this sail is rounded because that's the one that catches, that's the one that the wind's blowing up there. So I take that wet, damp, round brush and I'm going to blend the edge that'll give me a little uh, give me an illusion of roundness or a little curve to that sail just by wetting that edge and, and softening up I'm softening up that edge with a damp brush okay. and let's see uh, using the same brush now. Now this sail inside is going to have a shadow it's slightly darker but it's going to be right behind this sail. I have to use a round brush to uh, fill in some of these spots but it's a small area so I'll load it up with a gray and use the round brush now to fill in this spot. This has got a little this has got a little curve to it because it's it's the shadow cast by that forward sail. So it'll have a little it'll have a little shape to it. So I'll do that. Then there's two more shadows. The third next shadow is the one on this middle sail. And this is going to start up here. 
and it's going to come down behind this middle sec. There's one, two, three, four. The second sail is casting a shadow on this third sail. So this is the shadow that's being cast by the second small sail. And it's going to have a little bend too, because it's got, uh, it's at an angle. So it'll come out like this, a little wider. It'll come down. And then it'll have a little curve, a, little, a slight curve at the bottom, just to give it a, to show that uh, it's re cast shadow from that smaller sail in front. So that shadow is on this sail is being cast on this the shadow is cast here from this one and this one's being casting on the on the second one. Now the last one is the, the big the last one is the big sail. So I start up here and bring that bring that color down. This will be behind this sail is ahead of this one. So this one's in the back. So it's the it's the back sail or the rear sail. So it'll come back uh, and it'll follow the curve of that sail and then it'll, it'll come out and bow out a little bit more. And yeah, I like the way this color is working out. It's nice and it's, it's, a, it's a medium gray. It's not a real dark gray. It's not a real light gray. It's a nice medium gray. It's got a warm color to it from the Quinacridone Violet. And the burnt sienna, they're warm colors when you put them in with blue. They turn the, they turn the gray into a warmer gray, which is what I wanted, because this is the sunlight hitting these waves, but these are the shadows that are cast. And this will have a shadow under here. And this will come out, and this will bend a little bit now. This will bend a little bit in. to stay consistent with the shape of that wave of it. All right, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, turn the mute on. I'm going to put this hair dryer on to dry real quickly. Now the paper is all dry, uh, I'm going to use a rubber cement pickup to take off the uh, masking fluid. There's a little bit of masking fluid up on that, on that flag at the top of the main mask. Then I've got some masking fluid down on the water, which protected the white waves. And the masking fluid is very good to cover up the white paper. And the rubber cement pickup does a great job of just carefully rubbing it off, uh, just like you would an eraser and just gently re remove the masking fluid from the paper. You want to make sure the paper is completely dry before you do this or else the paper will tear. But the rubber cement pickup does a great job. And use the other hand to check to see if there's any masking fluid still on the, on the surface. Now here I'm adding a little extra color to some of the spots. There's a, a little bit of red paint up on the, the flag at the top of the mast. And then I'm going to add some more alistrin crimson to the, the boat, to the ship, because it, uh, remember, it, watercolor dries a lot lighter. So I'm going back in to add that color a little bit stronger on the main part of the, of the ship. I mentioned in the beginning about using watercolor pencils. This is a this is a, a blue pencil, and I'll use some several others. I'm going around. I'm actually cleaning up some of the white paper edges around the sails uh, to uh, clean up the edges, make them a little sharper. Here I'm adding a little bit more to the mast again, just to add color and to clean up some of the edges again. The watercolor pencil works very good for adding a little detail cleaning up a little of the rough edges that the paintbrush may have used. And uh, there's nothing wrong with using watercolor 
pencil so it's just the same as watercolor. I'm not going to wet this, I could, but uh, just covering up the, the white paper with the color pencil marks uh, will clean up those edges and, and sharpen them up a little bit. So a watercolor pencil is a very effective way to clean up the painting uh, at the end uh, of the painting process. Now the sky is a little bit, uh, I'm going to make the sky a little smoother looking so I'm going to uh, re-wet the sky and, and put some more paint on it. Uh, so first of all, clean up my palette. And mix a little bit of uh, cobalt blue. That's the color I'm going to use to add to the sky. And this sky color is just going to smooth out the uh, the colors that's already there. Now the first step is to re-wet the sky. So I take I take just a damp brush. And this uh, will wet the sky. I put some water on the on the paper. It'll make the paint uh, flow a lot easier. And so pre-wet the pre-wet the paper if you're going to paint over an area which you've already painted. And now I load the brush with cobalt, and I'm going to start at the at the bottom of uh, of the water there, and move up along the sails, reapplying, smoothing out some of the the blue color in the sky to make it look a little more cohesive, a little more continuity in the sky. Now I'm going to add some final touches to the ship. The final touches here which I want to add to this is the rigging. So I'm going to use a mechanical, just a mechanical lead pencil. It's got a 2B lead in it and a straight edge. This is my see-through ruler. And uh, I'm going to draw in a, a line from here to here. And rather than using a paintbrush or just a pencil line. Yeah, I found that using a pencil line just to show the lines, the rigging that's on a sail ship shows up well enough. Uh, I have used brushes in the past and pens and so forth, but I think right here a pencil mark shows the indication of a line. Uh, a little crow's nest up there at the top, just a, a mark, and then I've got some rigging lines that run down from the sails and some la ladders, rope ladders that go up into the upper area so that the uh, crewmen can maintain the sails. And there are a couple lines that run down to the uh, main beams. I did a fr little freehand sketch to do those. Okay. I think that gives it a little more, a little more feel with the rigging, of lines on, across the sails. Gives a little more realistic look of a, of a sailing ship. We'll put the mat around that. I'm satisfied. It turned out real good. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to call that sailing ship. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. It helps me in my ratings. So I'll see you in the next video.